Bringing the vision into a mission, this is Global Mission of Peace with the Goldfish Report. On October 9th, 2015, I am Radagast and I am joined with Louis, by Louisa, our media outreach. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. Sanjay, the wonder from down under. G'day, 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 g'day. Sherry Beal, representing A Right to Know. Hello, thanks for spending your time with us. We appreciate it. And the voice of the dragon and our friend, the ambassador. Thank you very much, everyone. Today, we're going to have a quite interesting talk. We're going to go through some things that are going to happen in the next coming week. We're going to start to have once a week question and answer session. Now, I think people are going to be very excited because now they're going to be able to actually uh, write into Global Mission of Peace to ask a question that is relevant. And we will, uh, you know, uh, take that. And the ladies and the boys here will be basically ask these questions that is from the viewers and see, I will do my best to try to answer them. Okay. And that's one thing because we, we, we're going to try to give our last chance for the goldfishes of the world to try to comprehend certain things. So in that effort, we will uh, start with a question and answer session. Okay. And today <clears throat> we want to talk a little bit about the world situation. As everyone is aware, uh, it's uh, news coming out today stating that the uh, uh, United States should stop giving weapons to ISIS and other militants and the Ukrainians. And um, also at the same time, the Saudis are saying that they will, they will start sending uh, weapons instead. And uh, we saw a very interesting fatwa uh, issued against Russia that this is a, a jihad. So Again, I call the Muslim scholars there and clerics to go back to the study of Islam and the Hadith and see if, uh, if this really justifies um, uh, jihad since it's a Muslim nation of another Muslim nation requesting to remove aggressors. So in that case, it's basically a jihad on the case of Syria and Russia, not the other way around. Okay, so that's a very distinct thing. Uh, we're also going to shortly go into the discussion of uh, an asteroid that's coming our way, uh, which has an interesting numerology, which includes the 666. And we're going to talk a little bit about treaties that have been signed, the new systems that have been activated for the bank banking, and how the Chinese yuan is overtaken the dollar, and uh, how the world is still shifting, and how the European Union is releasing their sanctions against Russia and closing in, and basically like the uh, president of Ukraine said that basically Russia has destroyed the world order. So basically with that, I want to congratulate Putin for his effort of destroying this old world order. And uh, so now from here, we are going to leave it up to the others in the team to start talking and then I will engage in later in a, in a little round. Thanks, Mr. Ambassador. Welcome, everybody. And there's a lot going on in the world. And I think what's really interesting is that it's so important to notice that uh, Putin is really kicking butt in terms of, you know, taking care of ISIS, and uh, which is something the United States just couldn't seem to do for some reason. Well, because it wasn't their agenda, quite honestly. So I hope people are starting to see that. We're also seeing um, a lot of things move in the financial markets. We're seeing a lot of uh, treasuries by many of the BRICS nations and including Norway, which is not a BRICS, but it's a it's another native of several nations that are just dumping the US treasuries. Um, and this is, you know, signifying a lot of things, you know, the commodities, the um, <clears throat> The bond market bubble, and uh, and also as the ambassador mentioned, the um, the yuan is now being used as, um, in trade in, in world uh, world trade. So it, it looks like the dollar, you know, Zero Hedge was reporting today that this is imminent, people, and we really need to do our research and find out and inform ourselves that you know we're in for a hurting, <laughs> and you know, in the United States, and they're not telling us the truth. So um, I know that. Uh, that our panel here has a lot to say about that. So Sanjay, did you want to make comments about this? Yes, um, well, we saw yesterday that the Rumbi Yuan um, took over the yen. So it's now moved into number four spot and it's making its way up and it will be number one. 
uh, we will see the shift and change coming. And um, also, as you said, the BRICS nations um, uh, dump in their bonds and um, you'll see huge market shifts early next week because people will react. Um, Sanjay, what do you as think far that's as, um, Sanjay, what's that going to do to the interest yeah. rates, do you think? Well, the interest rates in some places needs to go up, but um, they can't put it up. The countries are not like doing, like look at US, they should have put the interest rate up, right? But they didn't do it. So the markets went down again. Yeah, same thing with Australia. We need to put up the interest rate a little bit, but, you know, I mean, we're not going to because they know the markets are, the consumer uh, confidence is very low. So if they put the interest rate up, people will just stop spending more and the countries will go into deeper problems. So, I mean, when you're at zero, you can't go lower. <laughs> You've got to go yeah. up. But if demand's going down, then shouldn't the interest rates go down as well? Well, we're going to start saying that uh, I'm going to pay you to take loan out. That's the problem we've got with the world banks and stuff at the moment. This is the stupid cabal system. They've lived on this um, credit. You know, you got credit. You can only go so far before the rubber band is stretched and is going to snap. And that's where we at. There's not, not, not much more stretching left. Like, I mean, um, if you actually, if I'm paying you interest for keeping your money in my bank, then if you put money in there and I say, okay, I'll give you this much interest and the more money you put in, the more interest I can give you. But if you're actually borrowing money from, I mean, like the countries borrow from the central banks and the reserve bank um, is at 1% or half a percent or 0%, well, you're saying, okay, I'm not going to charge you interest, just keep paying the repayment back. But for example, you, you, what you said before was like, can we go lower? Well, I mean, if we go minus, then we're going to say, okay, well, you take the money, but I'll actually pay you monthly to take that money. That's just silly. And the world can't survive that way. And this is the mentality that they've trained us in. It's like, oh, that's okay. Everything will be fine. Let's just live on credit. Well, it can't. It needs to be. This is why Ambassador keeps saying, remittance surrender, the system is not working. Let's change. Let's actually, you know, bring in the 555, 555, win, win over 666. It seems like it's, it's, we're in a vegetative state financially, you know, that it's kind of like life support and it's not, it's not healthy at all. Radagast, I know you've uh, been following some of these uh, stories as well. And uh, <clears throat> I think you were following some things on Zero Hedge. Did you want to share any of that? Well, I mean, Zero Hedge, Zero Hedge has, been, has been telling the truth about the financial situation for months and months. It's... And what's frustrating, I mean, and what they kind of, they're almost like the alternative news for the financial thing, uh, for the financial um, media. And uh, their, I guess their favorite whipping boy or what, whip, you know, whipping boy, we'll call it, is the, you know, CNBC. And just how, how like everybody, how there's just nothing but propaganda. I mean, it's just like whether it's financial news or news about the world, what, what people are getting from mainstream reporting are lies. Um, you know, again, you know, this, the, the Titanic has hit an iceberg and they're, you know, they're, they're not, they're not talking about it. So, um, again, it's just, you know, the world, the, the financial world is shifting and changing just like the geopolitical world is. And if you watch regular uh, financial news, there's a little glimpse here and there of it, but nobody's real. They're not really letting people speak the truth. And when they, it's occasionally they, on CNBC, if somebody comes on and starts kind of telling the truth, all the different commenters come in and they start kind of, you know, stepping on them and not letting them speak. Yeah. So the um, world I, again, is this is, th <laughs> sorry, go ahead. The geopolitical world is shifting and changing big time. When you see Saudi Arabia as the head of the human rights, United Nations Human Rights Commission, Sherry, what is this telling us? Are we in trouble? Well, I just, I got a couple of comments on what we're talking about. One thing is that, have you guys ever heard the expression, you are what you eat? All the have time. you heard that expression? Okay. All the time. Well, okay. If you're eating, excuse the expression, but crap, like mainstream media. Well, that's too tough language on this channel. Come on, Sherry. No, I'm okay. kidding. Okay. I'm well, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. PG-13. I'm kidding. Anyway. Um, you know, it's like whatever we put in our brain, that's kind of, that's our food. So we have to, you know, pick and choose and, and forget the mainstream. That's what I'm saying. That just programs people, you know, you plug right into this, uh, 
this um, monotony of, of brainwashing. So um, that's what we're trying to do here on the Goldfish Report is talk, you know, discuss things that are happening in the world. Now, we're talking about the, um, the situation in the world right now. Okay, it looks like this, this is the battleground. Um, they're always, and I say they, I'll just say the cabal, whomever, the people who think they're still in power, are always trying to incite a World War III, and it's not going to happen. It is absolutely not going to happen. So they've got all this thing going on with ISIS, and what's the, the cool thing about it is Russia and China have stepped in, and they're like, we're not playing this game anymore. We sat back long enough, and within one week's time, as we discussed here just a, a bit ago, 40% of ISIS infrastructure is bye-bye, gone. And that's because Russia and China stepped in. Now, can the U.S., who actually funded ISIS, and they're always aligned with Saudi Arabia, and I'm sure Israel's in there somewhere, is what are they going to say? What's the U.S. going to say? Oh, my gosh, China and Russia, stop. You know, we don't, we, we, we have to keep ISIS going because we're funding them. They can't say that. So good things are happening. That's the point. And my last comment here on our discussion about the financial world, I just watched a video that I had actually seen live and in person in 2009 at the um, Project Camelot, Alex Collier, um, God bless him, who was talking, talking, speaking with someone. And they said, you mean, you guys on planet Earth, that's where you're born and you have to pay for the rest of your life to exist there? Think about it. I, we should not even have a monetary system. As drastic as that might sound, if you haven't heard that before, start thinking into that today and after you hear the Goldfish Report here. We can exist without a monetary system. It's going to take a while, but all it's created is hardship, greed, fear, lack, you know, and, and control. We've been controlled. That, the whole monetary system does not help we the people. It only helps those continue to control us. That's true, Sherry. And, you know, this, this Goldfish Report is really for people who, um, you know, kind of get the idea that something's not right, but don't really know all the details. It's actually quite ugly, but it is the truth. We have to face it. And for anybody who is watching this and doesn't understand what they're getting out of this, um, there's many different you know, layers of information that we um, discuss on this report. And it is for different audiences. So it's not going to, you know, not everybody's going to get the same thing out of this. Um, and we really want, um, you know, people who, who subscribe to our channel and, um, you know, follow us to kind of, you know, sit back and just kind of think about the things we're talking about. We're all on the same team, people. I mean, we're not adversaries here. You know, we want to be friends. We want you to join us. Um, the ambassador uh, started the show by saying, the report by saying that we're going to start a Q&A, a weekly Q&A with the ambassador. So you can, you can go to our website and you can submit questions on the website uh, that we will read on the report and the ambassador can answer the questions. So I think that this is giving you an opportunity to do that. Some of you have submitted questions and quite honestly, you know, let me just say this. I know the ambassador is waiting to come on, but we're a nonprofit organization. Okay. Not all of what we do is your business really. <laughs> I mean, we are happy. We want to be transparent and that's why we're doing this report. We want to be transparent because we want you to know that we're, this is the mission that we have, but we're a nonprofit profit organization and and there's things about how we what we do that are just private because we have the right to be private like the Gates Foundation has the right to be private the you know there's certain things that they make accessible there's certain things that other organizations make accessible but there's certain things about operations that people just don't you know post on their website because it's really it's really not necessary, okay? What you lose the focus on, and the ambassador has said this many times, is don't forget the mission. Because for, for people who criticize the ambassador about not showing his face, um, that's just a family rule, and he has to follow it. Um, but I know many people who post don't show their faces either. So I'm kind of wondering why you would criticize the ambassador when you don't do it yourself. And, and furthermore, um, we don't What's important is, is instead of spending your time criticizing us, do something good for humanity. Because my question to you, 
is what are you doing for humanity? We're trying to do something and we're a startup. It takes time for things to unfold. It's like you, some people are like demanding information and they, you think you have to have it within a certain amount of time. Who's thinking this? So do you go up to other nonprofit organizations like, you know, the Cancer Institute or I mean the Cancer, American Cancer Society? Do you go and you bang on their door and demand all of their, where do you get your funding? Show us where every penny where your funding comes from. And, and maybe some people make that available. But, you know, I, I think what you have to do is realize that, that we are uh, evolving this is a startup and as we get more uh, developed, you're going to see the fruits of our labor because Sherry is one person who is not just a panelist here, but Sherry is also an applicant who has submitted her proposal for funding and Sherry could also attest that this is real. She's also met the Red Dragon personally. I mean, this is as real as it gets. Sherry has gone to Hong Kong. She has started her business. She has started her bank account there so she can conduct her business. This is, you know, just be patient. And with that, I'm going to hand this over to the ambassador because I know he's got so much to talk about. Yes. What I wanted to talk about today is again, and now some people are probably going to say that my ambassador is repeating himself, but I think I cannot repeat myself more and more when it comes to this. Okay. We all come into this mission. Okay. Of trying to help each other to build a family and that family should together assisting each other to build this project that we see here on the planet. And very much true vision of peace is a family. It's not an organization, it's not anything else. This actually is a family. And we all have been having meetings, we've been having celebrations, we have been traveling together around the world and people have been, I think, seeing both myself and the Red Dragon for, so immediately as you guys have been doing in the tradition of peace, that probably they can talk more about our characters than what is good for me to sit to talk about myself. But it's very, very interesting that what I see is one of the biggest problems is that we've been brainwashed by the cabal to live in lack. And also not only that, to have this escapism implemented into our backbone. We can never take responsibility for our own uh, actions. It's always someone else that has to save us. And we have this like fake messiahs of escapism like Swissindo and Neil Keen and other people that basically people put their faith in that they will somehow be able to steal the family money so that they can disperse it to someone. I mean, this illusion has been going on for years and years and years. And we've been hearing dates come and go and we've been hearing stories about treaties and things that they've been doing that never seen any result for. And, you know, it's basically qualified bullshit. And when you look at the statements, I saw a statement that was saying that, oh, oh this is five star, we will probably be five star. No, it's a Maywa flower. Anyone in the family structure should know what a Maywa flower represents. If a person do not understand the representation of a Maywa flower, he had nothing to do with the family. So over and over again, we see the ignorance of people like Neil Keenan and others that's involved in the so-called truth movement and family people doing RVs and dinars and bonds and whatever type of frauds that, that they are involved with. And that was one of the reasons why we had to come here to set the record straight. We are not interested in money. We're interested in hearts, the hearts of the people. You can be a very educated person from a very well-known family. We don't care. We would rather go to the grassroots level people that has pure heart, who has a will and a dream and a project and a technology or whatever they have and go together and work together with them to fulfill their dreams to help humanity. Okay. We have uh, cities, you know, the refuge cities that we are working on. We are, and which is on the constructions. We have all the missions that we do and we try to keep the effort on our missions. We are always moving funds back and forward, back and forward for the projects. And yes, it's true. We are being uh, delayed. We're being attacked by the cabal, trying to delay, stall things. And 
blocking with Russian central banks and, and Russia blocking with Swifts and blocking with that and blocking with that. But we will not give up. But I want the people that's in charge of these institutions, and I want to announce it that it is an upcoming base jumping contest for bankers in a very near future without parachutes. And for the contenders or the non-contenders, I think it's very important to take that into consideration at this point of time. Where do you want to be in that future competition? Okay, do you want to have a parachute or do you want to jump without, without one? And I think this is very important at this point of time, that the spirit of God comes into all of us here and make us reflect on ourselves in the mirror, make us reflect on our mission. And our mission is to set humanity free. When I hear news like that there's an asteroid called 666 coming at us to destroy us in the next 48 hours, I, I feel a very sad heart and feeling because it's, it's again religious fundamentalists that likes to fulfill prophecies. So probably now some people is almost having orgasm all around the world. And I believe that God, the Creator, and the family, including Putin and others, will do their ultimate best to remove this danger for us in humanity. And I want also NASA to finally start doing things in the favor of humanity, not for their own agendas. And then we have people like the NATO, like the North Atlantic Terrorist Organization, uh, headed by this uh, Mr. Stoltenberg which I know, know him personally, uh, used to be a good guy who now have just turned into a demonic monster. And, and, and it's, it's so sad to see how this evil can come into people. And I all really, really pray that he watch himself in the mirror and start repenting. And it's the time for repentance. It's the time for surrendering. It's the time for remittance. It's the time for submission. And it's time for us to submit ourselves to the will of the Creator to build a wonderful world community where we all work with trust and love and compassion. And that is our mission. 555 should overcome 666. The beast should be re taken away. The tyranny, financial tyranny, the, uh, the other uh, tyrannies that we see on the planet, the aggression, the hate, the murders. And like I said before, it is so sad for me. My heart really cries when I see all these bombings on people. Because I know that there's always someone loving this person that's being blown up. Why can people just do the right thing? Lay down your arms, ask for reconsideration, start doing something to build up the nation and the country and become a part of this new era of love and prosperity, and where it's only will be a win-win situation, and a situation where we are reaching out to each other with love and with a mission, okay, to free humanity. And all of the leaders of the world, now I'm not talking like Obama, meaning just United States and Britain, I'm talking about all the world leaders, are inspiring for a peaceful resolution and for cooperation of removing ignorance from this planet. And so we need to support everyone that's doing things in good. And when we hear things like Poroshenko, the president of Ukraine, say that Putin destroyed the world order, congratulations, Mr. Putin. You again was removed from the peace prize uh, uh, selection. You are the one that should have the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, for all things you have been doing for humanity. But instead, they're putting some puppets from here and there and here and there, right, left, and center, like they do always. And I think it's time to actually remove uh, the Nobel Peace Prize Committee from Norway. I think they're not capable of taking decisions uh, that are sensible. And so, either way, it's very, very important from my side here to say that I am on your side. I'm here to fight on your behalf to do what we need to do to help humanity. And I'm not here with aggression. I would love to help the most challenged people to find the way to do what they're dreaming about. This is about doing our dreams and making dreams happen. 
And that is what the global mission of peace is about. It's not about money. It's about brotherhood, sisterhood, family atmosphere, and working together to do our projects because the funding is there, but the right mind need to be there too. And I feel that our family has grown up to be a wonderful family. And I welcome others to join too for the symposium and to put forward your projects and do these things. And also very important thing, some people think that maybe, oh, this, they're making all this money on these workshops and stuff like that. You know, some of the people that did this workshop, they were paid for that. Some go to administrative fees. This is not a money-making machine through Vision of Peace or Global Mission of Peace. What it is, is an entity that's here to educate and help people to fulfill their dreams and giving them the tools that they need to succeed with it. We are providing a service to assist people to reach their goals. Okay? And that is what the true mission of peace is done. This is what I want to say today. And I don't know if someone else has something that they wanted to ask me or something that we wanted to discuss more. Yeah. I, um, about the family, I was having that meditation last night while, you know, right after my prayers. And um, it's just that how that we are a family. And I just realized it's kind of, but the whole purpose of building this family is to kind of set an example for the family of humanity. This isn't meant to be a closed family. This is meant to be a spreading family. And it's through example of how to rise above our differences. I mean, you know, the symposium is 60 people plus. And everybody comes from a different kind of spiritual tradition of, of sorts. And if we got down to details, there could be quite a bit of friction. But nobody is invested in being right about a small detail of some belief system they have. And instead, what we have is we have people finding commonality and how we work together. And this is exactly the example that we're trying to set, not only for ourselves, but to bring out into the world. And that is what you have, have really... Um, focused on not only on the goldfish reports but those of us who know you personally your focus is always about family and working together win-win situations because in when we work together then then we then we you know we defend it together also i mean everybody's all oh, the powers that be the cabal and whatever if we were united there wouldn't really be much room for a cabal um it's in our division that the cabal thrives it's like, you know, it's like the, ter the terrain. If you're really healthy and somebody sneezes on you with the worst cold, if you're healthy, you won't get it because the terrain is wrong. So similarly, because we are sick as humanity and we're not acting like a family, some, a virus like the cabal is able to infiltrate us and have its way with us. So it's in coming together. And, and what builds immunity? Love. Love is how you build immunity. It, I mean, just look up the science. If you're in a good mood and you're in a good place, if you have a, a, a really good heart, you'll have a great immune system. If you're depressed, angry, full of hate, you'll have a terrible immune system. And that's what we're seeing on a global scale. The, hum, the human uh, immune system is down and allowing parasites into it and, and, willing to th and able to thrive because there isn't enough love. And global mission of peace is primarily about love. That's very true, Radagast. And I think also what you're seeing is um, for people who are just not c really comfortable with what we're doing or what our, our message is, it's because we're not part of the status quo. We are doing something different. We are saying something different. We're not going to fulfill your expectations of what the status quo is because we're not trying to be the status quo. So you you know, don't be careful comparing us to what the status quo is because we're not the status quo. And if you find yourself drawn to us, because you, you know, keep coming back to us, we know you love us because we are saying something that resonates within you. And that's the bottom line. That's what it's about, what Radicast is talking about. There is a message here that, you know, whether you consciously acknowledge it or not, there's a message for your heart. And that's really the message we want to communicate to everybody. Um, and that's what the ambassador is saying, that it's the heart of the people that matters. It's not about the money, because what they're trying to do is empower people to help themselves. So the ambassador is not a bank. 
and he's not standing here, you know, with handouts for people who are lining up. This is a nonprofit organization, and we have criteria that we meet to, uh, for funding projects. We want to welcome you. If you have a dream, like the ambassador said, if you have a way to help humanity, we invite you to come to our symposium. You can register at thegoldfishreport.com. You can also register on cbcglobaleducation.com. And there's also links to these sites on globalmissionofpeace.com. So we invite you to join us and to come in to the symposium so you can meet the ambassador yourself. You could talk to him. You could ask questions um, on Zoom. And you can also um, uh, ask questions to other people and participants who are part of this project. Um, because we're, we're, if you're going to compare us to the status quo, we, then there is no comparison. I mean, we're not going to fulfill that paradigm. We're in the new paradigm. And we might be saying a message that you may be heard over and over and over again by politicians, but we know that the politicians have failed. They just plain have failed. And, and it is a disgrace, really, to see, you know, President Obama have a Nobel Peace Prize before he really ever did any work. Um, and Putin, who has showed incredible restraint, I mean, really incredible restraint, like a, like a, like a really good parent, <laughs> you know, uh, regarding, you know, all these, um, all these uh, provocations against him. And I think he's showing good leadership. And, uh, and we really just want to invite you to come make your comments. Um, and we understand that we're going to try to keep the show you know, to a, a 30 minute mark, but it's not always possible when we have many people on the panel and we have a conversation going because it's about the conversation. You can kind of imagine yourself being part of this conversation. It's not simply just about a message or a rant that, you know, and the ambassador has these wonderful, he's just brilliant. And he really is, our, he's the, like the new generation leader. And for people like that are in this age group, this is, we're the, really the hope of the world right now because I think our, the generations, um, you know, before us, you know, didn't wake up. They didn't make it. And when they became the leaders of the world, they just followed in the same old paradigm footsteps. They just went with the status quo. But we're the deal. We're the game changers. We're here because we want to change the game. And you can be with us or you can be against us. And that's really the only, you know, option there is. But we want to invite you to be part of us. So I'm going to, with that, I'm going to ask for closing comments. Um, Sherry. Yes. Um, you know, the ambassador mentions and we mention family. And we're not talking about just people being members of the family who are in the Goldfish Report or a part of the Global Mission of Peace uh, symposium. We're talking about everyone. We're talking about all of humanity and beyond. No, we do not want to fall for the divide and conquer or we lose. And we have to be aware of that. Um, we are one. I just finished reading uh, a book last evening that's um, The Forgotten Promise by Sherry Wild. And speaking of a Nobel Peace Prize, this woman deserves a Nobel Peace Prize for humanity. And I'm going to share one thing, um, and and uh, one of one of the three points that she is the reason she wrote the book is to for us to understand that we are one. She had an experience where she was in a kitchen, sort of floating behind a man. She wasn't sure if it was his fa her father. She couldn't see his face, and the man was sitting there at the table with his hands on the table, and he had a fork in his hand. <clears throat> He picked the fork up and he jabbed his other hand. He stabbed his hand. The lesson being is we are one. If we hurt someone else, it's like hurting ourselves. We have to really, and I'm talking to myself also when I say we, I'm included in the we. We have to really understand that we are one and that this is a time for us to ascend into another dimension, you know, to from 3D, life can be so wonderful on planet Earth paradise. This is a paradise. And I, that's my one message that I'd like to share today for us to meditate on and think about that we are one. When you see someone, what I do is I just connect with another human being. Put the iPhone down, give a smile. You know, that is making a cause as far as cause and effects go. So just little things that we can do to start connecting with people.
And I've had these other amazing experiences later that I'll share maybe on a future show um, that have to do with, with really getting with my life that we are one. Thanks, Thank Sherry. What about Sanj? Did you have closing yes. comments? Yes, definitely. I mean, um, like what Sherry said, what, like what the ambassador said, like what you said, the family is not just this Goldfish Report family. The family is not just the Global Mission of Peace family. Um, those who have gone to our website can see, um, we say there that it's one world, right? Like we're all one family. doesn't matter what race, what religion, what color, how rich, how poor, right? Um, and you've even heard the ambassador say even our cabal brothers and sisters, remit and surrender. Right? He's even said with ISIS, you know, let's not blow them up because they do have family. So he's a man who's a true leader who feels for everyone. Right? And yet we've got people like, you know, talking about divide and conquer, um, you know, making fun of him and going, oh, this is the last chance and this is that. Like, guys, look at yourself in the mirror. Right? You know who I'm talking to. Right? Stop hiding behind the facades and being, you know, the whole prophecy, but look in the mirror, right? Be part of the family, or if you're not part of the family, then you're the Antichrist. So that's all fine with me, right? So we open with open arms, we invite you to put your cloak down and stop hiding behind the stuff and come. I'll be the first one to hug you and say, Welcome to the family, right? So that's. Thanks, Sanjay. Radhigas, did you have some final comments? It's just about the focus. I mean, some of the more critical people are, are, are focusing on the money um, because that's what, they, that's what they're focused on. And we're focused on the love. And it really, I mean, the whole reason to fund humanitarian projects is to get the love out. And so, you know, when, pe when people, you know, that's the whole thing. It's like, where's the money? My question from them is, where's the love? Because that's, I mean, really, I mean, it's, that is what they're losing the focus on. And I just want to let people know it is about the love. The funding is secondary. It really is. And that's why we have a true mission of true mission of peace, family and symposium, because we come for there for the love. The money is just, the, the money is actually the easiest part of it. It's the cohesion and the, in, and the networking and the coming together and the, the ability to forgive each other, including the cabal if they remit and surrender, to, so we can all work together. And that's what this focus is about. So those of you who are focused on money, you might be very dissatisfied with how, how you see us performing in certain ways. But if you were to come in, if you were to take a look inside and see the cohesion and what's, what's being built, and if that's what you're interested in, you'll be more than amazed. And not only that, we, you know, this is my last word, is that like majority of the people in goldfish uh, world is focused on, you know, basically easy money, just uh, like lot, lottery ticket type of money. Now, in... Losing the ambassador's signal. People in the true okay. mission of peace uh, have seen... People have seen the, uh, the, you know, have seen the from proof of funds. They have seen the forest. They know what they're involved in, what's happening, and so people doesn't have a problem. But the people from the outside have no business with what we are doing. If they are part of us and the part of our movement, yes, they have rights to know who I am, and they know who I am. Most of everyone knows very well who I am and what we are about. But the ones that is on the outside no reason that they, they need to know unless they want to be on the inside. That's why I'm also recommending people to come in the inside and, and learn to understand who we are, what we are, and what we're doing, and then you will find out. Okay? But you have to start to take the first step. We're not going to rapture you. Okay? And that's a very important thing. And I want to end with a word of uh, an imam. His name was Imam Ali. He was stating that uh, the Christians and the Jews is not our enemies. Our enemies are ignorance, our own ignorance. And this is what we are seeing here. What we want to bring ourselves out from the darkness of ignorance into the light and work, you do that through family and support each other through the hardships. And that's what we need to do. Then that's where we need to keep our focus. 
And with that, I want to say that may God bless you all. It doesn't matter which religion you belong to and whoever you are, even my enemy. And I pray that we together are going to be able to shift and change this planet. And thank you for me. Thanks. And I have to tell you, this is a man on a mission. And that's why we're behind him and supporting him and, and what, uh, what he's doing and uh, what he's trying to do for humanity. And I want to ask our, our um, you know, critics out there to tell us what you're doing for humanity. And with that, I want to thank you for joining us. And I want to, uh, this concludes this report of the Goldfish Report. Thanks.